it looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind. It either heard me or smelt me, and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up, and that that shocked me. They don't make people that that big. The way it moved, uh, almost as if it was gliding across the beach. I've never seen anything move like that in my life. They were screaming at each other in gibberish. It sounded like a language and they were chuntering away back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. I know what a bear looks like and there is no way on this planet that what I saw were bears. Hey, this is Luke Griggs, and you are listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you. Uh, We're going to be chatting with uh, Kyle. And Kyle comes to us from Canada, but it ends in kind of a weird way. And, you know, I talk to a lot of eyewitnesses off the air. Very rare to get one of them to come on the air and share something like this. So I'm so happy to have Kyle on, and I'll let Kyle go into it. Um, There in the intro, that weird noise you heard... Uh, that was actually captured by Grassman58 on YouTube. I think he goes by Will Grassman on uh, Facebook. Uh, but he was near Black Lake, Washington uh, when he captured that. And Black Lake, you know, it gets his name from this weird, dark uh, character of the water. Uh, so it was named Black Lake. Uh, but here's the audio he captured. Let's take a listen. Very cool audio. I posted that up on the blog, and uh, thank you, Grassman58. Very cool uh, piece of audio you captured. And on Friday's show, I was talking about the former CIA agent, the retired agent, uh, that was talking about UFOs, and he went into the balls of light. I wanted to play that for you guys. I threw it up on the blog, but I figured I'd throw it into the show. Uh, Mr. Ramirez makes an interesting comment during this interview Uh, with Project Unity. Uh, John Ramirez is a retired uh, G7-15 rank CIA officer, and he served with the agency from 1984 to 2009. Uh, And he makes a very, I mean, he's pretty high up in the food chain in the CIA. And uh, in this piece of audio, he calls them orbs. I, I, I used to call them orbs, now that I call them balls of light because of ghost orbs, I think are very different. Uh, But what he's referring to in this piece of audio is the balls of light. Let's take a listen. See, the government's more than willing to say that the craft are real. Mm -hmm. The government doesn't want to say is who's driving the craft. And so that's still like very, very quiet um, of who's driving the craft. And the Air Force, um, their exploitation of that type of technology just made a mess of things. Because when people see triangular craft and whatnot, um, and they're not like flying in space, they're flying in our atmosphere, um, it it sort of points to the fact that, you know, we know what the triangles are. Um, 
And we want people to think they're seeing UFOs because then they won't know exactly what they're seeing. But the, the presence of orbs, the presence of orbs really threw everything um, at a higher pitch um, because they couldn't explain the orbs. And they said, okay, these, these aren't the saucers. These, these aren't your grandfather's saucers. You know, these, these orbs are different. And that's what really got everyone excited uh, is, the, is the presence of these orbs yeah that were detected and so that's where most of the focus is on now um are these orbs <laughs> i cut it a little short there he he was saying their focus is now on the orbs uh very cool stuff if you want to go watch the full video uh from project unity i posted it up on the blog and uh, mr ramirez goes into a lot of things a lot of very strange things it was very compelling to sit there and listen to it if you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out sasquatchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Uh, let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, Kyle to the show. Uh, Kyle, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, Wes. It's, it's quite an honor to be on your show. Yeah, no, no. The honor is mine, and I'm glad to have you on, Kyle. Thank you so much for coming forward to share this. Um, I know this encounter took place in Manitoba, but your first interest in the whole topic of Sasquatch prior to this encounter uh, started about 25 years ago, didn't it? Well, yeah. Uh, for me, uh, the whole Bigfoot Sasquatch thing, you know, it, it started about 25 years ago. There's a small town in Manitoba where I'm from called Flin Flon. Back then, I was doing an ice fishing trip. I had some sort of encounter. I didn't actually see them, so I kind of, you know, it doesn't. It's for me. It's a, it. It doesn't count. Kind of a thing. I had tree knocks. I had trees going down off in the distance in the forest. Uh, they were knocking back and forth, leading me further into the forest from a frozen stream. Um, and, and again, because I didn't actually see them all kind of, it's kind of not of the caliber of your show. So I'll leave it kind of where it is, but you know, I, I think in a lot of cases I've heard, listened to, or read probably a thousand plus, uh, Bigfoot encounters in the last 25 years because of that day, it just boggled my mind. You know, what I saw and encountered, uh, it didn't necessarily see the animals or the creatures or the beings. However, uh, what I did see were trees toppling down in the distance, left and right, and 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 tree knocks, and you know um, it just went on and on. And at one point, I thought I was being hunted by these things, uh, so I kind of got out of there as fast as I could. Uh, leading up to this encounter, which was only five or six months ago, uh, I had recently moved from the city. I I don't know by what standard people call it big city anymore, but it's from Winnipeg, Manitoba. I moved a couple hours northwest of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, population Winnipeg is about 800,000 people now. And for me, being born a city boy, but always a country boy at heart, um, I had tried very hard tooth and nail at every opportunity to get out of the city, to go on my hunting trips and my fishing trips. Um, and an opportunity presented itself where I could sort of sell my house and, and buy a country house to be out of a mortgage out of any kind of debt or payments and, and I, I couldn't have been more excited about it so I did it uh, and so I moved about two hours northwest of Winnipeg Manitoba and I bought an old house this old house was probably a hundred years old from the old homestead days out here yeah sounds nice almost kind of sounds like you're out in the middle of nowhere oh yeah definitely uh, in the middle of nowhere um, I mean, it's sort of, you could say a farming community. Uh, however, I could say on a day-to-day -day basis, I see no humans. Like I see nobody. I do see the occasional vehicle going down my road, but they're going to other places when they do come by. And it's it's very infrequent. Uh, we're in, in a winter time here, for example, I see maybe three or four cars in a day uh, and they just live somewhere else, you know, further down. Um, other than that, it's all wide open spaces. There's sort of a, if I had to sort of present it or describe it on a topographical map,